Hello and welcome back to my channel. I hope that everybody here is doing really well. And today we're going to cover some common winter care plant issues. And we're gonna th go through some of the reasons for why these happen so you have a background understanding and then any fixes that may be able to help you if you run into these situations with your plants during the winter season. Now, most of the plants in our collections are from environments that are not represented in the environment that we currently live in. And what I mean by that is these are generally tropical plants. They generally like warm conditions, high humidity, and this is why they do better in our homes. However, if you live in a country where your seasons change quite a bit, such as you have maybe a harsher, colder winter compared to your summer, or you just have varying weather conditions in different parts of the year. This can greatly affect your plants, even if they are indoors, because the environment that they're growing in changes, and sometimes these changes are not good, and they come with certain struggles that you're gonna need to figure out. Now, of course, with every individual plant and every individual species, this is going to differ greatly because these plants actually come from the wild generally or are related to a plant that comes from the wild. <laughs> I'm talking about hybrids there, but essentially each plant is going to have a different condition that they are evolved for and different condition that they want to grow in. This is really general issues you're gonna find with most indoor plants, but it does not cover everything. And I always encourage you to research the plants that you have, the species that you're caring for, that will give you all of the knowledge you need and the type of environment that you need to replicate in order for that plant to grow well for you. If you've cared for plants for quite a long time, you probably have experienced these things and they are not fun and they can be quite stressful. And it, by no means am I saying that these things do not affect me because they constantly do every single year. Despite having an awareness of them, sometimes they just don't fit your plant care schedule and things suffer. The first one of those things is the very upsetting and the very common root rot. So I do have a video on my channel covering root rot, what it is, what causes it and how to, to kind of not fix it, but how to deal with it. Root rot happens a lot when the seasons change or the conditions that your plant are growing in changes because of a few things. I currently have a plant that is being affected by root rot at the moment, and it is a plant I've had for some time, and it's very, very, very upsetting. It's one of my favorite plants, guys. Begonia black fang suffering with root rot. One clear way to see if you have root rot on your plant is the plant starts off dry. The leaves are flimsy. You might even get some dead leaves. They're not turgid at all. I'm being so careful here because it, it's, it, this is like floppy. It's not upright. It's sad. It's dehydrated essentially. And you give it some water and it doesn't perk back up. That is your number one sign there could be root rot. That is indicating to you that the roots were not able to take up the water that you just gave it. And that is because the roots are probably damaged. That is what I'm currently trying to be very careful about. Why does this happen in winter though? Indoors in winter, our houses are generally either colder or have much drier air. If you have heating on inside your house that generally dries the air, so it lowers the humidity level, of the air that the, your plants are also growing in. The result of this are either that your plants stay wet for longer because it's cold, or maybe they are drier because your heating is drying them out. If your heating is on, this can suck out moisture from the substrate that your plant is growing in. All of these things can happen for me, quite rapidly in the sense that I don't really even realize it's happening until it's probably too late. So what happens is either your plant is too wet, but you don't recognize that and you go on the regular watering schedule, schedule and you water it again, even though it didn't need water. So you're 
giving it too much water the roots start to probably become mushy and wet and you could have mold issues as well and bacterial issues that will accelerate this root rot basically it's a mushy wet situation or your plant is too dry and you don't notice that fast enough and you do not water when it needs to be watered, i.e. you're stuck on your old schedule, but it hasn't matched up with the plant schedule. And in this case, what happens is the roots do the opposite. They get the opposite of mushy. They get really, really dry. They become desiccated. They're super dehydrated and this damages the cells in the roots. Then when you eventually do water, the cells are already broken, so they can't take up the water and give it and spread it around to the rest of the plant. So not a good situation. So how do we fix this issue? I know how it's going to be fixed, but it doesn't mean you're always going to do it when it needs to be done. But if you are unsure, my tip is to actually just keep a much closer eye on your plants when the seasons are changing as in check them more often than you have in the summer you want to be checking them maybe every i would say every two days so that you're understanding how the soil is changing and you're changing your schedule based off what the plant needs this is why people telling you that you need to water your plants once a week for the whole year in every situation is never going to work because your plants are on their own schedule and that does not fit your schedule so what you need to do is actually adapt yourself to give them what they need at whatever time of year that it is the second thing that you may encounter i'm calling frostbite but it isn't actually frostbite because plants don't get frostbite, humans do. But essentially they're getting affected by cold temperatures. So like I said, your house can be, maybe it's warm because you turn on the heating a lot and it's really dry. This is probably not gonna happen in that situation unless your plant is near a window or your house is just generally cold. It could be an old house or maybe you're saving money by not putting on the heating. <laughs> So these plants are generally tropical plants. Some plants will be able to accept changes in temperature, maybe in their natural environment at night or up higher in mountain ranges, they have more varied temperatures and so they're able to cope a bit more. But some plants really don't have that capability at all. So you want to base your placement of plants around this knowledge. I will not put any plants on my windowsills <laughs> that I know are not capable of dealing with a drop in temperature because generally that's the place where it gets colder. You get condensation, you get wet and moldy windows sometimes if you are in a country that experiences colder conditions in winter. And this can show up in your plant by, it can be visible on the leaves. It can be discoloration, it can be chlorosis, it can be kind of browning of some leaves, it can be even some plants that don't like moisture on their leaves if they're by the window like begonias and things like that they generally don't do well because if they're touching a cold and wet window that leaf that leaf is gonna die okay it's just gonna die it's not gonna be happy in that situation. <laughs> so what is the fix for this? It's really quite simple you want to remove plants from windows that you don't think are able to handle it. Or like I've just done, we just had a really cold week here in Ireland. Um, our temperatures don't go that low here. We're generally quite mild in our winters compared to other countries. But we did have a really cold week where it got down to minus four, minus five and I removed all plants from all windows of the house for that week because I'm just not putting them up there. Sometimes if they need the light, I would put them there for a couple of hours during the day, but never when the sun sets because that's when it gets colder. So remove them from the windows. That is fix number one. Another thing you can do is if you are in a cold house, pick the warmest room in your house and try to adapt your plant care to put them in there. Maybe it doesn't have lights. Maybe you could supplement with artificial lighting. Just find the best situation that you can for your plants. Also, I find keeping them in the center of rooms or even huddling your plants together into a good environment is also good. If you are really worried about cold damage, you can put them closer to um, heat sources like radiators or fires and things like that. But obviously be careful of too high temperatures, melting leaves, don't let them touch hot 
um, surfaces uh, and also be aware that if you do that they are generally more likely to um, be really really dry <laughs> so you probably be watering them much more often so that is how I fix that number three is slow growth some plants experience slow growth some of them actually fully go dormant in the winter periods again another one where researching your plant is very helpful because some plants actually do go dormant some plants will lose all of their leaves and completely die back and only go under the soil for a period of time in the year i do find that indoors this doesn't happen as much unless your house is really affected by temperature that can trigger dormancy in some plants but for most plants it's really just a slowing in growth and this happens for loads of different reasons so for reasons like i just said there's a change in environment maybe temperatures are colder which doesn't promote often really fast plant growth there's lower light levels. Light is the food for your plants. If they're getting less food, they're not gonna want to grow as much. Um, and also, generally we pull back on fertilizing as well, so they may not have the nutrients that they need to sustain faster growth. And also, if they are even actively growing, sometimes they can have smaller leaves or maybe um, a larger internodal spacing or something like that, that is indicating to you that it's not optimal they can often put out really shitty small leaves that you're probably gonna cut back in spring anyway. <laughs> now, fix. There's no fix for this. This is totally normal. <laughs> Your plants, just like you are, are undergoing a kind of a slowing down for the winter season. This is totally normal. Obviously, with everything, keep an eye on your plants. Are they actually suffering or are they just slowing in growth? That's really important. Some things you can do is, I still fertilize throughout the winter. I just do it less regularly and in a more diluted way. Um, I use organic seaweed fertilizer on all of my plants, but I do still, like they are still doing stuff in winter winter indoors at least so I do still like to fertilize so that they're not getting a deficiency in something but other than that there isn't really much that you can do like I said when it comes to spring and growth bursts out again you can cut back any shitty leaves that you don't like or really leggy growth you can do all of that then but for now the plants don't need it another thing that you can do to even help the plant with its energy is if there are leaves that you're planning on getting rid of or they don't suit your aesthetic or for whatever reason you want to remove them i think that's i would probably do that more often in winter because it's less maybe leaf area that the plant has to support you know with lower light levels and colder temperatures etc etc but in general there's no fix for this it's a normal occurrence on your plants it's just the slower period of the year okay the final common thing that i feel that happens to most plants is pests and there's just no getting around it if you have plants you have pests plants and insects they live together they exist, both of them together, all the time. In the wild, way we even more so. Um, their relationship is really, really, it's tight. They have a tight relationship. <laughs> They're meant to be there. Indoors, we don't have our natural predators and so pest populations can get a bit out of control and they can cause significant damage to your plants. Now, with pests, I always find, and I know a lot of people do, that pests really come out of the woodwork from somewhere when the seasons change. This could be that maybe the seasons are changing to one that is more favorable for the pest's life cycle. Maybe there's wetter soil that they can lay eggs in. Maybe there is drier air that suits their kind of habitat that they like. It just creates a more suitable situation for them to live in. And I speculate that because your plants are slowing in growth, because they can get affected by things like root rot, everything I've just said, the plants are generally more vulnerable, I find. And I do think that when your plants are really, really healthy, they have everything that they need, they're in some weird way probably less likely to get significant damage from pests, unless it gets really out of control, but that's what I find. With drier conditions can give rise to pests such as spider mites that really, they thrive on dry conditions. If your plants are wet or your soil is moist, 
they're not going to like that. However, on the flip side of that, there are other pests that really like the wet soil. Wet soil is a great breeding ground where a lot of pests like to lay their eggs at the moment and every winter I always have way more gnats than I am used to having. Uh, fungus gnats, they live on wet soil and there's nothing I really do about it. I just try to make sure that my plants are not overwatered or staying wet for a really long time but in general they don't bother me. They come and go with the colder wetter um, environment that's better for them. So they're always going to be there and I'm not going to get rid of them. That's just it. So how do we fix this? We fix it in the same way that we do with every other pest situation at any other time of year. When the seasons change, I keep a closer eye on my plants. I make sure that I treat them more regularly, even like preventative treatment regularly during this period always. So that's Generally, I do it on the transition into winter and then when we're going from winter into spring. Those are the two times of year I just always keep a little eye on them. Check, make sure they're not, you know, getting out of control. And another thing is also to manage soil moisture. Like I said, try to make sure that you're not overwatering. That will give rise to other issues like root rot, like I was saying. Also, practice some acceptance of pests. You don't need to throw the kitchen sink at them either, I find. Um, as in, you don't need to blast them with everything all at once. In general, that probably will stress out your plant as well because it might destroy some beneficial bacteria in your soil that they really like having. It could be a range of different things, but um, it's just something that is an ongoing management thing with your plant collection. It's always gonna be there, just be wary that in the winter time, this can affect your plants. If you have any additional tips for people that are struggling with their plants in winter, please leave them in the comment section below. You guys always teach me some stuff in the comments. You always leave really good advice and I'm sure that anybody else watching that needs maybe more than was what in this than was in this video, they'd appreciate that. So go down to the comments and let me know any issues you were having, how you fixed it. So that is it for this video. Happy Christmas Eve to those who celebrate. I hope you all have a lovely Christmas and a really happy new year. I will be putting out one more video before the end of the year, just as a little thank you to everyone and potentially a little giveaway, but you can look out for that. In the meantime, have a wonderful Christmas and a really safe and lovely time. I love you all so much and really appreciate the support. I will see you very soon in the next video. Bye.